Penguins officially 2016 NHL Stanley Cup champions. Do we know what that means? What? Hot Phil dogs? Kessel got a cha- got a cup? Mm-hmm. Can you win with Phil Kessel though? But you can't win with Phil Kessel because yeah. he's a coach killer, right? Yeah. But don't worry, sure. same with Sidney Crosby. What? That's what they were proclaiming because another coach was fired under his. Whoa, whoa, wait, what? What? The Pens fired someone after they Mid- won a cup? No, mid season they fired oh. someone and then Sullivan came in. They won the cup with Sullivan. Yeah. Oh. So. So he's got about seven years. <laughs> we'll, talk, fired. we'll talk Penguins winning the cup. We'll uh, talk about the chances of both the Penguins and the Sharks returning back to the Stanley Cup final. We'll talk about Gordie Howe and his passing. Talk some Jets news, uh, along with Truba and Line. Some mailbag stuff, uh, some hirings, the draft rankings, expansion talk. Lots to talk about today. So let's get started right away with episode number 97 of Last Man In Podcast. Dan, Cam, and myself, Greg. Um, but before we get started today, I was talking to an old guest host of ours. About mm. joining us for the summertime. So we might get a fourth member for the summer. If That's it works four is tough. It's a big it's, old table it's talk. It's a big table talk, but interesting insights. Okay. So This is the same summer colleague we had last year? Same summer colleague uh, we had last literally year. Literally a year ago this time. Yes. And the reason why he was brought in was because he was supposed to be permanent, but it didn't work out. But he comes in the summertime, it helps because sometimes there's not a lot to talk about. And we do get sick of each other talking all the time. We do. So it's nice to have a fourth voice. Okay, so Penguins win in six over the Sharks, something that neither none of the three of us predicted uh, would happen. So, at the end of the day, um, if you watch Sportsnet, all they talked about was how Pittsburgh was faster than San Jose. After watching that series, watching six games, what's the biggest takeaway from that series? Why do you think the Penguins won? <clears throat> Just a better team. Just watch the play. But what makes they, them better? The 5-on-5 play. They're so dominant. They just controlled the game. Even, like, third period of the last game, San Jose had two shots in the third period of the bit most important period of their of their season. Not because they didn't, they not a good team, because they got completely shut down. I I just, Pittsburgh, like, the more I watch them, they almost seem like they just got better with each round. It was, yeah. I, I just reiterate what I had just said, but they're five on five play. Like, okay, their penal their special teams. Well, they great. didn't take penalties. That's they their don't, big yeah, thing. Yeah, they take. I think maximum two a game. Like, yeah, that's about it. And so obviously they're going to be good at five on five if they never take penalties, and if they can get you to take penalties, their special teams is pretty good. I believe at one point there was a a forward line in game six or five. I yeah, I saw it at least once or twice. Power play was Kessel, Malkin, Crosby. Latang, Dumoulin maybe, but it wasn't Dumoulin. No, it was okay. Crosby, Malkin, Latang, and uh, I think it was Kunitz. There you go. But the with for- Latang, yeah. But Letang, the forward, yeah. no, no. The, at the one point though, I was just gonna say like who I was oh. watching with Busser. Busser mentioned he's like this fo- power play line can literally be an all world line. If like the world had a hockey team, this could be a line. Crosby, Gino, Kessel. Like seriously, they. I would argue they're. Well, I guess Kessel's not good enough to make USA. We all know that. <laughs> but, like, seriously, when they're on their teams, they're usually the top three guys every year on their team. So, wow. like, that's an old world line lining up. It's like, no, and then on top of their depth, like, their best line wasn't even that, well, that mishmash line they had. It was the HBK line throughout the playoffs. I think the, the crazy thing is, is we saw how the HBK line came together throughout the playoffs really became, and the best thing is, but they were friends. I don't know if any of you guys saw during the parade yesterday, Evgeny Malkin's ego tweeted this, and it was a video of um, Hagelin and Benino, like, dedicating the cup to Kessel. Like, man... You monster. I'm sorry, that was my phone. Um, This was the best, you know, he's the best teammate we've ever had. He's a great line mate. I don't know why anyone says anything negative about him. Because he's genuinely loved there. He is. The players Isn't like that playing with weird him. How when you let a player play and just have fun and do enjoy what you himself and enjoy himself, how things kind of work out. Oh, hey, let me just name another player that just so happened to be on that team. Astor beside this one, he was injured the whole year, so that's why. Eric Fair played great for the Pens when he was here in Winnipeg. Didn't play so great, but he was injured the whole time. He was yes, here. shoulder injuries. Yeah. But yes, he's a very good support player. But 
on the line of Phil Kessel, that that line came together. Then you see what both Crosby and Malkin can do. They are so good that they can make guys like Rust, Connor Sheary, Chris Kunitz. Um, Kunackle! They make them better players. They just, hey, you can play second line because I'm on your line. I'm going to get a lot of the focus. You're going to slip through the cracks. That's how good they are. Get open and have your stick on the ice. Exactly. And you got to the NHL without me, so I think you'll do fine. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's what benefited them at the end of the day. Um, about the Sharks, more or less, Don Jerry said it best. Pittsburgh was there to win it. The Sharks were just happy to be there. That, wow, I did not hear him say that. Um, that's such a great line. It's true. You could see it. Yeah. There just wasn't... There was no panic in the Pittsburgh game, and it seemed every time that San Jose went down, sure, you had that feeling they'd come back, but it wasn't... I just didn't think they played to the level they played in the other three series. They were hungrier in the other series. They believed in themselves more. At the end of the day, I j- they were either too tired, too beaten up, too too sore, but they just they didn't have enough left in the tank, really, to compete. Um, it was a pretty one-sided Stanley Cup final. It was. It was. It was. Um, Could also begin <clears throat> in the changing of the tide in the NHL. Something else I noticed, Eastern too, teams. watching this series is the Sharks, are, they're... Forward-wise, their top six, they're very strong. But their bottom six is pretty weak. It's younger players. It's younger players, like very young. Like Tyr- Tyranny, Carlson, you got Wingles, you have Nieto. Like, it's a young group. Very, very young, unproven group. And I, I think, I'm not saying that was the only difference, but that was a big factor, I think. Well, just their third line at the start of the series, before Thomas Hurdle went down, was Carlson, um, Tyranny, and Her? Joel Ward. Oh, wow. That was their third line. And then they had to go against... They more or less likely w- were playing against Malkin's line, and they're just not as good defensively. And then you look at the third line for Pittsburgh was the HBK line. There's the depth of... like You, you win depth there mm-hmm. alone. Right? They may be able to match up, yeah, the Crosby line with the Thornton line. And but then, but after want, that, it's scoring. like... Eh, I don't know. And that's the difference between every cup winner is that even dating back years and years, it's like, oh, you get to go against Taves. Oh, we can take Taves. Oh, wait, the next line's Patrick Kane. Have fun. Oh, the next line after that has you know, three well, mishmash of guys. That you hey, just- in 2010, it was John Madden, Andrew Ladd, and uh, Chris Steak was their third <laughs> line. All yeah. guys that can play that level of hockey. Yep. Uh, moving on so we don't spend too much time on them winning the cup. Uh Obviously, all of us were surprised because we all picked the Sharks. But once the series got there, I wasn't surprised that they won the Cup. No, not a bit. No. Nope. Crosby winning Conn Smythe. A little more surprising to people. Now, before we get into our obvious gripes, it was there a case made for Matt Murray winning the Conn Smythe? Yeah, I, I thought think so. I thought if Kessel wasn't getting it, I'm super homo to Kessel. You know this, but I thought if Kessel doesn't get it, it's got to be Matt Murray. So when Crosby, when they said Crosby, I was like, I was very upset at the time. But then I looked at his numbers, I was like, oh, well, he actually did put up, like, Kessel put up 22 points, Crosby had 19 points. It's just, Crosby, I didn't notice him, because he didn't score once in the Stanley Cup Final. That's because he had six assists mm-hmm. in the, I believe, six in the... Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, I'll open my granola bar. Do it. Jesus Christ, Christ the man. band-aid. Why are you eating? Because I'm hungry. We just I'm hungry, hungry too. Okay, Crosby winning Conn Smythe, or do you think Matt Murray? Matt Murray just dis- was there an argument to be made for Matt Murray? A hundred percent. I disagree with both of you. Twenty-one year old goalie just took his team to the Stanley Cup final and won the Stanley whoa, Cup. Whoa! I'm not saying he was. He the only- was the reason, no, though. But he played, did he not? Fifteen wins. If you don't buy a rookie goalie, if you don't at least have a goalie that can win you a game, you're not going to win the cup. That's true. I think he was adequate. I think he. Was a decent goalie. He didn't win them. He didn't steal them games in the Stanley Cup Final or really anywhere in the playoffs. There was no game that was like, oh, this is his game. Martin Jones had a game in Game 5. I think Martin Jones, I would have picked him before I would have picked Matt Murray. Martin Jones carried that team at times when they couldn't score, when they couldn't do anything. Pittsburgh had to play against Washington. Brain Holpe won a game for that team. At no point in the playoffs did I ever look at Matt Murray and say, he won them a game. He kept them in games. He gave them chances to win by making saves at certain times. 
but by no means did I think he was the most valuable player. I think if Zach Koff was in, they wouldn't have gotten as far. But if Crosby's not in that lineup, if Kessel's not in that lineup, it's far worse than if Matt Murray's not there. Because they still had Flurry, they still could have gotten there. I don't think that he <clears throat> should have been in the conversation, especially with the pedestrian numbers he had. Especially with how, like, I made the comment that a lot of people were putting him ahead of Kessel, ahead of Crosby, after Game 4. I said, what if he shows up in Game 5 and plays bad Game 5, plays bad Game 6? Clearly there was a reason why he was pulled in the Tampa Bay series in the conference final for Mark andre Fleury. There had to have been a reason. And either he wasn't playing well enough, whatever it was. I don't know of a Conn Smythe winner that just gets pulled for playing poorly. So, I think at the end of the day, <clears throat> I don't think Matt Murray deserved to be in the conversation. I know a lot of people want him there. I think there was three guys ahead of him on that Pittsburgh team. I think Martin Jones was ahead of him. I think Latang played a better playoffs, even though his points didn't show it necessarily. Crosby was dominant, and Kessel played amazing. So, so if if he's average, then why did not why didn't he get yanked and they go with a more experienced guy who's won a Stanley Cup? But it wasn't he was winning. That's why. But he had to be doing something right to win, to win sixteen he was, games. He, the team in front of him. And he only won 15. But he's, I don't think that he... was he, pretty good. He had I'm very not pedestrian... I'm that he wasn't... He was good. He, he had was, pedestrian playoff yeah. cons I'm not saying numbers. he was a top... Like, that he was the second candidate to Kessel, but I think he... there's a There was an argument to be made that he, he could have won it. I don't think... How I many think 21... Need, how, how many rookie I don't goalies think, who haven't played... He's played what? How, even how many regular season games? 15, maybe? But 15? I don't think that should be what we look at. But it's, As, it's pretty impressive. But that doesn't make you the most valuable player. Just because you what show up at, at just, key time, yeah. Like, he didn't, it's not that he showed up, he just played well enough to win games. He's 21 and he didn't crack under that, but that, doesn't, that much pressure. Age shouldn't matter. It shouldn't be like, oh, we should just give Con Smythe awards to people who are young because they didn't crack under mm. pressure. I think it's impressive. I'm not saying I'm not saying it, it's but. not impressive, but he's a goalie. He's made to stop pucks. He did that at a very adequate average level throughout the playoffs. He had a very average save percentage, a very average goals against mm-hmm. average. That's my argument against it. And I'll, I know a lot of people don't agree with me because they see, oh, you won the Stanley Cup, you automatically should be in the conversation. <clears throat> and I don't agree with that. Let's bring up our two favorite goalies that we've talked about a plenty on this podcast. Corey Crawford? And? Chris Osgood. Yep. Wow. Yeah, there you go. It's like, but I don't, are I you going to ma- pick them to build a team? Nope. No. I'm I think Matt Murray's, goalies before that. I think Matt Murray's a better goalie than both of them and has oh, a lot of potential. Sure. The problem I have is is that automatically they go in the conversation just because they won sixteen games to win your cup. <clears throat> yes, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of skill to be able to do that. But I, I just I don't he never won them a game. It wasn't him that won them a game. He would make a timely save, but he never stole a game from another team because the guys in front of him played too well. So, you're not the most valuable player when you can be replaced, I think. Personally, I think they broke down when Fleury was in net. I think they broke down when he got yanked. Like I said, it's very hard to say that a Conn Smythe winner is your most valuable player when he gets yanked in a playoff series. Yes, they lost a game when he wasn't there, but I think that was more on the team than on him. Mickey, well, if you if we're even dating back, I'll even use last year. Didn't Crawford get yanked for a couple games? Uh, yes, for Darling to get them out of the first round. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, that was a first round last yeah. year. I think he was hurt. I don't think he got yanked. No, no, no. He, no, got he, he, play, he did not start like two games. Two games for in a sure. row because Scott Darling came in because he got pulled, and then almost, uh, and then once Darling came in, he played <laughs> unbelievable, and then Nashville stan- fans started attacking his uh, alcohol past. That's why they was didn't play him. No, like the fat. I I think it was not. It might have been a different team. What happened was, Car, um, Crawford played pedestrian because he's not that great of a goalie. He just gets the job. Word done. Of he the just day wins you games. That's he fine. just he he sometimes wins you games. He never will steal a game for you. And I think that's what makes great goalies is they can steal games for you. I'm not saying Matt, Matt Murray can't. Just I didn't see it in those playoffs. He also had to play against New York Rangers, who don't score goals. <laughs> yeah. But he also uh, beat the best team in the league. I don't think he beat them oh, as much on. as Cross. He let three goals in in the third period of a game they're up 3-0. In Ever game an six. elimination game. Not, not his fault. 
when your team takes three to over the two o- o- over the glass penalty. I, that's, no, that's, that's when it is. That's when it because that's when you pay your. That's when bucks. if you're a m- MVP, that's when you step up. That. That's when you step up. Martin Jones stepped up in Game Five. He won that game for San Jose. Yeah. There was at no point where Mar- Matt Murray had that I'm game. That is my that, argument. That, well, because that's the Penguins argument were so good that they didn't need him to be in that position. Exactly. And the Sharks needed their goalie to be that good. Exactly. So that's what makes him an no, MVP. No, that's what we're saying. Well, Hans Smythe is MVP, not youngest player to be good. No, I agree that Jones is an MVP candidate. He, he kept them in Game 6. It could have been 8 nothing for Pittsburgh. But to move on from this... But he also got yanked in round three too. But he didn't get started over. No, they didn't start Reimer. They started Flurry. No, but he did get yanked. So, but it happens, right? It's a six-one game. You're of not course. not going to pull your starting goalie at that point. You at least start the safety. I'm no, just saying, yeah, for whatever reason, he got yanked too. I'm not saying getting yanked's bad. But I, I'm saying when a goalie starts over another goalie, that's what is bad. Wow. Well, that's yeah. that's when there's either something fundamentally wrong with the way the coach perceives your play. That's all my argument is. So, should Kessel have won this Conn Smythe trophy? I know you're going to say yes because you're a Kessel fan. He should have yeah. won it over Crosby. I think. See, I mean, I, I that's my so. argument. Like, at the time, I was like, how do you not? But then you go look back. Crosby, Kessel was there at the forefront for everything. Yes, I, I'm being biased. But now that I go and look back at, like, his stats in the games, he came up big and made huge plays at big times throughout the playoffs. Let's go back to the game, a game four, was it? Where it went into overtime against Tampa. Where Crosby could have easily, no, he did score, but he started that play. He won the faceoff. He set it up. He stole the puck once um, Strowman, or no, uh, Johnson got pulled down. He passed it to Ry- Brian Rust. He could have easily put tossed it. And he just like, he came up clutch in big moments throughout, throughout all of the playoffs. Maybe not so much the final, but even the final six he assists won, in six games. He won the draw in game two that led to the, win, the goal. game winning goal. There you go. Yeah, uh, so yeah. stuff like that. It wasn't necessarily the flashy stuff that we saw with Kessel, but it was just the the little things. That but came up. Kessel also had like thirty scoring chances the last two games, <clears throat> and I'm barely exaggerating. Like he yeah. had a lot. Of sc- if he buries some of those, I think that he deserves it. Kessel but, also had a lot of game winning goals. Hmm. No, he was big. I think I think Kessel made well, his all mark. All on I, the Kessel train, think, but we have to accept that. I think that. giving it to Crosby is a cop out by the NHL. I well, do. remember, it's not the it's NHL a, that gives it out. It's media. Media, whatever. And eight of the people influence. voting on it or something like that were from Toronto. Eight They're of the 21. Yeah. yeah. They're from Toronto. It's, a, it's And they don't see Kessel as a decent It's player. a popularity no, they don't want to admit that he's. They, they don't want to admit that he was the best player in the playoffs. Yes. They don't, they don't want to swallow their tongue. Well, that's their, there's a lot of stupid ones like that. And I was hoping... Like Gary and Phoenix. I was hoping Fuck, that he Arizona. would win it just to piss everybody in Toronto off. I, I was hoping he would win it too. I don't think it he mattered to it. him that much no. to win it. I think he was happy to see his team win. When he lifted the Stanley Cup, and he wasn't the first person, which we'll get to in a second, um, but when he lifted it, he seemed like a kid in a candy store. Smile from ear to ear, just so proud to be in that moment. And then he had the interview with TSN, and he's like, it's just been the best year of my life. Well, of well, course, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Can't get but much yes. worse than what he had before. But Well, we're not, not saying that Toronto's I'm not saying a bad... That, but I'm not saying being the in Toronto is bad. I'm saying what he went through yeah. in Toronto is awful. Yeah. The situation. He, didn't, he didn't deserve it. Would, he did not deserve it. Would you want to play with the media that's in Toronto? No. The, he was the whipping boy. But yeah. here's the thing. In Toronto, you're in that certain markets... Kessel, because you're a star or a star player on a team, you have to be the face. You have to answer questions. And it just so happened that two of their face guys in Kessel and Fenuff back in the day, or yeah, yeah back in the day got traded. Um, those guys are not guys who like doing interviews. You can just tell they're not, they don't really, they just show up and do their job. That's what they do. And Kessel did that all year in Pittsburgh. <clears throat> just showed up because why? Gino, Latang, Fleury, Crosby. Lots uh, of other guys take lots yeah, of yeah. other guys take the load off of him. Yeah. And there was literally no pressure. He led Toronto every year he was there except for his final year in goals. He came back from a shoulder surgery. He hasn't missed a game since a soldier, shoulder surgery back in 2010 or something like that. <clears throat> oh, really? He's played that many games in and a row. His Ironman streak is 
yeah. something to actually marvel because it's pretty damn good and impressive. Yeah, but when the team fails in Toronto, I don't think it was his fault. I think there's I don't think it was either. No, they were just a bad got situation. A, he got a hundred percent of the blame for it. It's oh, not, for sure, it's not his fault. No, if yeah. your supporting cast is, can't play hockey, no matter how good your player is, and you have a Tyler Bozak because you're not even, in the center. Even Pittsburgh, like you know, they they got some young guys who aren't proven, but those guys are third, fourth line guys, or they get spliced in with Malkin and Crosby. Well, you know, well, let's just bring it back. It's, it, it's obviously it was the best year of his life. And you saw how excited he was. And did you know that like a bunch of his family members went to like every game in the playoffs? Yeah, right. That's so awesome. Why wouldn't you? Oh, well, his sister Amanda Kessel, I'm sad I skipped over this, um, became signed the most lucrative contract in yes. um, women's. National Women's Hockey League. <clears throat> yeah. That's We have the CWHL, they have the NWHL yeah. um, for the New York Riveters. And they actually were selling shirts at a time. I really wish I would have bought one. I didn't. Uh, that said, uh, hashtag better Kessel. And they uh, had one funny. for Phil and one for Amanda. That's pretty So, funny. so awesome. So, the first handoff of the Stanley Cup, which has become kind of a thing since 1994. Before that, it was just kind of they all mashed together. It's been a thing in the NHL for quite some time. Normally, it's an old guy who gets it or some guy that went through uh, some Hardship. controversy. Yeah. Um, Vladimir Konstantinov comes to mind from the Detroit Red Wings because he was killed in a limo accident after they won. Or not killed, sorry. Uh, was handicapped after a limo accident in 1997 when they won it again in 98. He was the first person to get it on a wheelchair. Scotty Bowman got it in 2002 because it was his last game ever as a coach. Things like that. So it's become a thing to do. Yeah, feel good. Feeling good. Uh, I believe... Willie Mitchell in 2012. Willie Mitchell yeah. in 2012. Uh, don't one. even get me started on... That was a good one. <sighs> what year was Ray Bork? Ray Bork was 2001. Oh, yeah. uh, can't That's be, the I best can't one. can't watch that video. Without crying? Or, uh, yeah, or Timu. The call. Oh, the but call. he wasn't the first one Timu, to get it. You're right. Ray Bork, I'm getting goosers. The call from the Ray Bork yeah. one. That's the best one. And now, Ray Bork, after 22 years... I gotta tweet it. Oh, my God. The only, it. The only reason fun. why, what makes that moment so good is normally the captain, when he gets it, he hoists it. Joe Sackick didn't even lift it over his head. Nope. He just grabbed right it here, buddy. and right to Ray. Yeah. And it was just such a perfect moment. Yep. So this year, a lot of people thought Pascal Dupuis was going to get it. But it actually went to Trevor Daly. Reason being, I'm going to pull it up here on my phone. He broke, broke his leg. leg. Well. No, he was injured, but he, during the playoff run, or like right before playoffs, he went and visited his mom, and she's not, uh, you go. You got the story. So, Sidney Crosby, yeah. uh, on deciding to hand the Stanley mm-hmm. Cup to Trevor Daly, um, there are so many different things that motivate you, obviously, to win. But there's other things. Daly had played for such a long time, hadn't really even had a chance. He had been through some different playoffs, but getting hurt at the time he did, knowing how important it was, he had told me that he went and seen his mom in between series and stuff. She wasn't doing well. She wanted to see him with the cup. That was important to her. I think that kind of stuck with me. And after he told me that, we were motivated to get it, motivated to get it for him, even though he had to watch. Yep. So yeah, he gets well, the cup, Mom first one to lift it, cup. on a broken ankle, which couldn't have been fun. Props for um, him to be getting on skates. Yes. And then so, he handed it off to Duper. So to yeah. Dupuy. Dupuy. Yep. And then I think Dupuy uh-huh. went to Kessel. No, no. Kessel got it like seven. No, Kessel, I had to was, wait a while. Kessel was. Kessel, either way, I was Dupuy, happy. Dupuy, I think went to, yeah, like Latang and then Fleury, yeah. Gino. It went through like their old gang, best, and then Kessel. The best one was um, Jacques Martin almost dropped it because he had shoulder surgery, and when he went to lift it, he like kind of hurt himself, and he almost dropped the cup. And then he, like, got a lifted over his head after Wasn't that. that because someone ran into him? Like, no, it was because his... Sh- I heard because it was his shoulder that hurt. No, no, but he had shoulder surgery, like, not really. Oh, Way yes. back in the day, because, like, he was coach of Team yeah. Canada, and someone... Owen Nolan ran into him. Yeah, yeah. And so ever since then, his shoulder's yeah. been busted. Okay, to move on now, what are the chances that either of these teams can get here? We'll talk about San Jose first. What do you see their chances? Not next year... Well, maybe next year or the year after. What do you see for this team going forward? Do you think they have a chance yeah. to come back to the Stanley Cup? They have Pittsburgh? most yeah. of the same. No, San Jose. No. I they have most of the same crew coming back. I don't. If you want to pull up San Jose, I don't know what we're doing for the salary cap wise. But I think their most, salary cap's fine. Um, no, Brett but I Burns, mean like contracts. Brett. Well, they don't really lose anyone. The big thing for them is they'll lose Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe at the end of next season. And Brett Burns is up as a UFA at the end of next season as well. Oh, no. 
So 2017, 2018, or next summer for San Jose is a big summer. They have a few RFAs this year. Who are their RFAs on? Uh, Thomas Hurdle no, that's and a good one. Matt Nieto. Yeah. Only UFAs Nick Spalling, forward-wise. Yeah. Uh, Brett Burns is up after next year. Uh, Roman Polak's up this that's year. That's fine. They won't resign him. Whatever. And uh, James Reimer, UFA, of course. That's fine. They'll find a goalie out there. And that's the thing. Oh, is it yeah, support Sam players Poo? they have? And their core is there for next season. If Martin Jones can play the way he played this year, I think that that team can go back to where they were. They could just get a little bit of help on that third line. If it can there. happen, I'm, I'm going to do a long-distance call from this one. If it lines up that it works like this, I would love to see a Western Conference final of Dallas with a healthy Tyler Sagan. For San Jose. That'd be Because they line up pretty good. With pretty evenly. Other. I think they they need another um, they need another depth defenseman because Brendan Dillon and uh, Jason Dem- No, no Roman Roman Polak were getting Roman a little bit Polak. beaten up uh, in that final series. What about Pittsburgh? Now they're an interesting case because currently, before the season even mm. starts, they're already three point eight million dollars over the cap. Now, granted, Pascal Dupuis' contract is 3.75, so they're just barely over the cap. But they still have players to sign, which is the issue there. Well, since I wasn't given the opportunity to give my opinion on the Sharks, oh, nope. just saying, I don't think they'll be there next year. Okay. Historically, teams that lose in the final don't fare well the next year. Hmm. I'm not saying they aren't Tampa good enough. made it to the conference final this year. They did, but they didn't make it to the final. You're right. Great point. You're very, very right. Vancouver didn't. New Jersey did. Injured the Rangers did. <laughs> I'm just Vancouver saying. Would hey, never go back. No. hey, at the time, yeah. Vancouver had a good you're team. Right. You're, 100% you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm not saying they can't. I'm saying in Philadelphia? the West. Philadelphia? Yep. There's so many good teams in the West, I just don't see them. I'm not saying they can't, but uh, uh, I don't think they will. Pittsburgh lost one year, then went back and won it the next year. I'm not saying oh! it can't happen. Oh! Boom. World the Empire. Yeah. No, except, that's true. Though. Except that's true. when you think about it, 2006 Edmonton. What have they done since? 2007 Ottawa. What have they done since? 08. What did uh, Pittsburgh? They made it back. Exactly. So really, there's yeah. one case in the last ten years of a team going there's back. There's one to the case final. in like the last twenty years. No, because it used to be like New Jersey would lose well, yeah. to like Dallas. Early and Dallas 2000s. Would be, it was. Yeah. It was n- it would hand Calgary the hasn't done anything really but since. even then, Dallas won the cup, made it to the cup, cup the next year, year, they lost. lost. New Jersey won the cup, they made it to the <laughs> final next year, but they lost. lost to Colorado. So, yeah. not... Oh, that's so what So, they still saying. won the okay. cup and got there. So, but, I, right, yeah. So, what do we when you the lose person? the cup, it's, it's Side the harder. Part. So, how many people are... Pittsburgh has to be signed? one RFA. Who? Bo Bennett. Okay. One well, UFA, Matt Cullen, who probably, uh, if he wants to play another year... Once again, they're bring at him. the cap right now, and they need to sign a fourth-line center. They are over by $2 million according to this. 3.8. Oh, I guess it's at 71. Sorry, pardon me. $2 yeah. million. Dollars, and 3.7 of that is Pascal uh, Dupuis' contract. Justin Schultz, RFA. Ben Lovejoy, UFA. And then they uh, have Zatkoff. Zatkoff, UFA, but I mean, he's... They won't you guys, you back. realize the, what you're naming? Bit pieces yep. that you can get... For cheaper than what they are paying. I know. The majority of their team is back. The thing with them is they don't have any money to sign these guys in the first... They need about four or five players with zero dollars. They have a million, 1.3, to get five or six players on their team. And a minimum contract's by 50. You have to think. They have Malkin, 9.5. Crosby, 8.7. Kessel, 6.8. Hornquist, 4.25. Haglund's four, Kunitz is three three eight five, Fair's two million bucks for the next two years per, per year. Benino's two million bucks a year. Yep, that's, that's actually a, a steal of a contract. That is, but that's a lot of that's a lot of money tied up in, and like they wait. Got, hold on, they got by on the on the defenseman they have this year, but I don't think their defense is that solid. Can you do a scroll down to the goalies? Um, Tell me what Mark Andre Fleury gets paid. Five seven five for that the guy's next getting traded. Three. He has to get traded. By, they have to protect him if they do not, which we'll talk about. But we'll, like, yeah, we'll move to that. That. Let, let's. How much is Fleury again? Five, five seven five. Five seven five. There you go. You trade him for a defenseman. You like need two. But if your goalie's only pedestrian, the, your backup's only pedestrian. Do you I'm really not. Get rid of Fleury? I'm saying his numbers in the playoffs were average for goalies in the playoffs. No, but moving from I know I'm where you're coming. Yeah, it. I know. I'm I know where you're coming it. from. You're but being a douche. <laughs> but okay, all right. No, I'm not. I'm. Th- I I agree. I think Matt Murray should be their goalie moving forward. If that's what he can do in his first season as a goalie, is help your team win. Never did he lose a game. 
But he never won them. That was my argument. Fair enough. Let's move on. Sad news from the hockey world. Mr. Hockey, a.k.a. Gordy Howe, passed away. Um, and what I didn't realize is him and Wayne Gretzky were actually really close friends. And it was a big blow to the hockey, hockey world because he's best known for his time with Detroit. But the other thing that made him such a big ambassador for the sport is the fact that he played almost every decade from the time he was born. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, when a guy's nickname is Mr. That Sport... He's kind of a big deal. He is the deal. He's not a big deal. He and, is the deal. But here's the thing. He was no Johnny Football. He was Mr. Hockey. He was a gentleman, a person that would stop. And one of the great quotes I heard was Steve Eisenman. He said, I model my career after him, both on ice and off ice. When I was on the ice, I had to play with class and had to go my hardest out there and be proud to wear the Red Wing jersey because of the people before me. Off the ice, he taught me to never look over someone Always, if someone asks you for the autograph, you stop and you do it for them. Because they're taking time out of their day to see you because you're a hero to them. Now, that's not a direct quote, but that's essentially how he inspired people. Because he was such a good ambassador for the sport. He played parts of five different decades or something. His final game was in the IHL in 97 when he was 69 years old for the Detroit Vipers. Shut the hell up. He was 69 years old. Whoa! Whoa! That's impressive. A part of one of my favorite logos in hockey, the Detroit Vipers. Now, the other crazy thing with him was he played with both his sons at one time, was part of the WHA, then went back with the Hartford Whalers in the NHL in the 80s, and then where was where was the All-Star game, the one year he made it as an All-Star game? With gray hair, full head of gray hair. He's probably in his mid-40s in Detroit where he was the man. And the crowd reception, you have to watch it on YouTube. Just find find the clip with Gordie Howe, All-Star Game in Detroit. Find it. It's chilling because everyone's losing their minds for Gordie Howe. And obviously, we're all too young to really have any moments of him. But it, I feel like we have to acknowledge that he was there. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big advocates, which was a question that I want to talk to you guys about, 99 is currently retired league-wide. Mario Lemieux, Mary Lemieux's number 66 is honored league-wide. No one wears it because no one's going to wear Mario's number. Wayne Gretzky said that they should say no more number nines in the NHL, which would fuck up Colorado Avalanche because Matt Duchesne will lose his number. But what do you guys think of a league-wide ban and honoring of Mr. Hockey number nine? Yeah, I, I'm saying yes because... Okay, see that, okay, I hard argument that. for it. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. He clearly does. The Why they did it for, well, Gretzky and Lemieux and that, obviously they're amazing. Not that Gordia was not amazing. He was third but, all-time scoring until... But yeah, of course, but <laughs> still my is third argument all-time, so. for how it would be harder nope. to do I can't remember. would be they wore odd numbers. Like, they wore 66 and 99. Not a lot of people wore that. Nine's incredibly common number Mm -hmm. but you know what if you're gonna do it you might as well but if you're doing nine that's bullshit you do four as well do it at once Bobby Orr as well Bobby Orr number four what I saw retired but I'm not comparing retired number nine but don't do it for one player do it for Gordie Howe do it for Bobby Hall and do it for someone else that I can't remember the number nine combine it make it a joint they're Uh, all it was Richard nine Richard oh Okay. They so them. you say it's a very common number, but we're doing it because these three mm-hmm. legends then, all were number nine. Then if you want to do it even more, you do number four, Bobby Orr, and for Jean Beliveau. Oh, damn. Oh, Scott Stevens even nowadays. Rob Blake. But no, those guys did not transcend the game the way Jean Beliveau no, did. No, Or the way that... Yeah. But my argument, I would, I'm okay with it. Um, my argument against it is where do we draw the line? And I think the line gets drawn in the sand where your name is literally the sport, Mr. Sport. You deserve your number retired. Even I'm if it was totally fine I would say, yeah. I, I, think, I think if you're a player that's wearing that, you honor him and say, I'm okay with it. Vander Kane will probably be pissed. That's the first guy I thought of. I'm like, uh, oh, Kane. Considering but, he had to get permission to wear it in Winnipeg. Well, he yeah, didn't have he, to, I, but he asked permission. He, but Gordy Howe was a co-card owner of the Giants, so he knew Gordy Howe. You mean Bobby Hall? He, that guy. Yep. I'm sorry. Yes. That's what I meant to say. But 
I'd be okay with seeing it. It's something interesting, obviously, to talk about. So let's move on. We got lots to cover, not a ton of time. So let's talk Jets. Um, There's a lot of rumor mill around Jacob Trubo getting traded. The recent rumor that I've heard is Matt Duchesne. What do you guys think about that? To Winnipeg. It was interesting when I heard it. Um, I think that's a lot for the Avalanche to give up for, for Truba. Obviously, there might be more pieces involved than that. Those are the main two pieces. But, I mean, from what I've heard, that's... Uh, Possibility. Not even going to happen, so... I've heard Truba staying now, but not yeah. Shane. Obviously, you and I would be happy because... Hey, you know what? If I'm Shevel Day off and that's offered to me, I have a pretty hard time saying no. I'm just saying. That's uh, that's pretty tempting, but they they believe right now that Tyson Berry will not resign there. I actually read something today. Sorry. Joe Sackick said they're trying to sign him long term. Okay, good. And they want I'm to happy. keep him. Of course they do. It's just if they can, which is obviously a major shift from what was going around the last two weeks. Trooper for Duchesne, Obviously, you'd want to do it. Do you think it would benefit the Jets? Do you think both teams benefit from that trade? You know what? I I think it does, uh, and I only say that because, okay, Colorado. They clearly need some more deal because they're kind of crunch or like they have older guys on long contracts or lots of money and they don't really have an in between so Troop would fill that gap and be the D of the future for them or one of the pieces of the future for them. Um, as for the Jets, they already kind of have a log jam on D. Troop didn't have that great a year. Kind of, I'm not saying he's not going to be a great defenseman or formidable, serviceable defenseman, but what Duchesne does now is he gives you an extra punch again. On forward, and they're already fine on D. Like when Truba didn't play, they're okay. They still have Enstrom, Buff, Myers, Stewart, Stewart. They oh, have and that Stewart's little, gone after little this year, nugget though. in the AHL that we're probably going to see this year, Mister Josh Morrissey. Mm-hmm. And there's also guys like Julian Melchiori. There's there's and guys. We're that... not saying they're like going to replace Truba, but they they. Now would be the time to do it if you want it. You know, and I really hate to burst your guys' bubble while you're rolling with this. But some stuff came out this week. Kevin Shelvdayoff was asked about it, and he said, I'm not trying to trade Jer- Jacob Truba. But yeah, it's obviously fun to speculate. You're say that. Gary, but Lawless, it's... Gary Lawless, this is, his, this is coming from him. He said, everything can change, but at this point the Jets are focused on signing Truba. Trade, a trade isn't in the works or even being considered right now. Okay. He said, speaking with Truba's camp, their focus is to sign with the Jets, hold out trade requests or desire to play in, in another market. We're all shot down. They're both. They both want a long-term deal, and they're not even talking about a bridge contract right now. See, here's that the thing. came out this week after Shevelyov said, he said anybody in he said in this day and age anybody is tradable, but he said right now they're trying to sign Truba and Shifley. His direct words were, "So am I trying to trade him? No." And he normally is Perfect. very non-committal. Yeah. So for Perfect. him to come out and say no, I would venture to say he's probably not going anywhere. Exactly, and I agree with that. But, I'm totally fine with that, especially because there is a lot of guys in our system. That can play the way Duchesne plays. All I was saying, rumor, interesting. It was interesting. Nonetheless, to discuss. If if that's offered, I have a hard time saying no. If I'm the Jets. Depending on what else depending, is going back. Depending right? what else you would Because you'd have to give something else. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But and we're taking on an extra $6 million in salary down the middle. Yeah. Just put that one out there. True. Yeah. Okay, Patrick Liney. This caused a stir with Winnipeg Media because we needed something to talk about because the Jets weren't in the playoffs. Yeah. Patrick Liney says he wants to be number one. The Winnipeg media alluded that too. He doesn't want to come to Winnipeg. It's confidence. It's not. He's saying he's good enough to be number one. Mm-hmm. Right now, do you think Line A deserves to go number one with the year he's had? Because we talked about his accolades. They're ridiculous. Okay, here's the thing with I'm going to use Line A and Austin Matthews. When you okay, I'll even bring it back to Crosby, McDavid, Hall. We knew about these guys. Those like the big guys couple years before they were drafted. Austin Matthews has been Austin Matthews for the last, like, two or three years. You've heard him. You've heard his name. Line A, honestly, first time I heard about him, last year World Juniors. He hasn't been in that. Well, I'm not saying he doesn't. I guess I'm alluding the question. Does he, does he have the skill to be number one? Yes. But unfortunately, he's going up against an Austin Matthews who has been in the limelight, not that Line A hasn't, for the last three years. He has been Austin Matthews for his entire life, obviously. But for the last three <laughs> years. He's had the name Austin Matthews yeah, for, for some time. Yeah. I believe it's 18 and 19 um, years. If I'm Toronto, I still... I mean, also, also it just depends on the fixing the need. Depends on who's drafting, obviously. But uh, 
I I still go Matthews. I, I still go Matthews. I would say this, and I, I've said it before, and I've I've I I read this. They said between Matthews and Line A, honestly, they said one's not really better than the other. Matthews will go first because he's a centerman. Yeah, that's they that said. Exactly yeah. but they said is. honestly, their Line A might even be better. Like that down the road, he could be a better but player. I don't think Here's eight line is for sure going to be better. I think. But they said positionally, Matthews is a centerman. Harder to find a number one centerman. Then that's why he goes number one. Um. The other thing, too, is I think that even, let's say, Line A becomes the number one player from this draft and Matthews becomes the number five, I think you're pretty happy to have a top five player from his draft year. Yeah. I think that that's something you, you are happy with. Even though he didn't project as Line A and all the Leafs haters will be like, ha, you didn't pick Line A, they need that centerman spot filled. And I also think that as good as Line A is, he doesn't have the name or the weight that Matthews has. There's a... Like Patrick Laine and Jesse Puglia at your RV remind me of kind of what Leon Dreisaitl went through. We didn't hear about Leon Dreisaitl because he's a national player. But we've heard time and time again of Austin Matthews because he's American. But that also brings me back to we heard a lot of Alexander Ovechkin before he even came. Like the hype around the 2005 World Juniors, not only was he the first pick overall, but it was let's watch Alex Ovechkin play because he's that amazing. Didn't really show up, but... In the final, he yeah. didn't show up. He got hurt. Easy. He was very good in that entire they, thing. One of their... I've watched, like, mini documentaries and, like, videos and in, countless interviews of the greatest junior yeah. team of all time, because they're amazing. Yeah. Um, where their game plan... Their game plan was literally... Tar- it was just hit Ovi. That was one of Stop their game him. plans. Stop like, him. Every At time Ovi stepped on the ice, they, the God, who was the coach of that team? Sutter? It yes, doesn't matter. Sutter. Whoever the coach was, he literally said... Ovi's on the ice, don't look at that puck. You're hitting Ovi. That's our job. Take the penalty, target him, which is a douchebag move. But guess what? They it won, and it works. Yep. Okay, moving on now. Let's go into the NHL melee. And announced this week, it's official. Las Vegas is the team that's going to be picked for expansion for the 2017-2018 season. If they pay the $500 million price tag. To the, that's the expansion fee, along with approval from not only the owners of the new Las Vegas team, and I believe a board of governors vote as well. So it's not official. The NHL is not for sure expanding, but if they choose to expand in 2017, 2018, they are going to go to Las Vegas, which I am starting to not hate as much as I did before because I've just accepted as fact now that it's going to happen. I still think having an odd number of teams is just weird. It is weird, but, but the NHL has done it before. It's been done before. And it's... And it could be followed up by Quebec a year later. Ah. Just like... Glad you brought up Quebec. Just like 98, 99, 2000. 2000. Every year there was a new team. Quebec was not chosen for expansion, so they weren't going to do the two team. However, the owner of the team, the owner that's going to buy a team in Quebec, says he'd rather go through relocation because it's less money. The Jets paid what 180 to th- mil- thousand, 180 million for the Jets. Yep. 500 million for expansion, and they're thinking they could probably get a team for about 350 million in Quebec, and they already have an established team with an established pro- prospect pool. Interesting fact too: in 2000, the last time there was expansion, it cost 50 million to have a franchise. They're <laughs> they're they're barking for 500 million. Or uh, no. That's the hey, let's cover up Arizona for a couple more years. Fund. Wow. Um. Yeah. Just Until that a quick team gets question. I gotta read up on this for sure. But how does how do you get a like how do you prospects work then? So I'm not sure how the AHL is gonna work. I don't know where your prospect pool is coming from. But they're getting I believe it's sixteen forwards, nine. Well, they have to pick a player per team, so they get thirty players. And your NHL roster normally only has twenty two. So I guess you have eight players that just go to an a- a- AHL. No, but team. I'm talking like. Pro- legit the draft like how does well that they get work? first pick overall they'll get first pick yep. I believe in 2017 yep so next that's so how, that's how like the Thrashers the yeah. first year they got first pick now so they'll first pick. they'll get first pick overall which whatever it's not I think that's exciting next for, year it'll be next year oh Nolan Patrick <laughs> he won't go first overall though he's a top four um top four or five but it, it's interesting because we haven't seen this but. I don't know how the minor league's going to work. They're obviously going to be years behind everyone else. 
and they're going to have to draft. They're going to have to really good GM, really good scouts, and they're probably going to start. If this gets announced fully that they're going with expansion 2017, 2018, they are going to be at every game this year scouting players, figuring out who is on their short list for guys that they want to. They're probably in their minds going to say, okay, they're going to keep these guys, not keep these guys. Because some teams have some very difficult choices, Nashville Predators being one. They automatically, well, they're going to keep Shea Weber, Roman Yossi. Then they have to pick between Ryan Ellis and Mateus Eckholm. Well, there's one defenseman gone. Um, another scenario in Columbus. They have, I believe, one defenseman on a no-movement clause, which means they have to keep him at least right now. Go on generalfanager.com. They have an expansion um, game, I guess, is you pick the players you want to keep, 11 per team, 7 forwards, 4D, and a goal. Uh, 7 forwards, 3D, and a goalie is how you do it. And then after that, you pick your expansion team, which is pretty horror awful. Except I had, Penn, I had Ben Bishop as my goalie. Reason being, how do I find this? They're going to protect Andre Vasilevsky versus Ben Bishop. Oh. But right now, it's only. Um, just go to uh, tools. It's in tools. It's in tools under general finish. Expansion tool. Exactly. So you, the thing is, is as of right now this year, so they'll they'll have players that aren't protected right now. Protected. The problem is, is there's guys that are on no movement clauses, like Tobias Enstrom and Dustin Bufflin. So that leaves a problem with Jacob Truba and Tyler Myers. They got to keep one of those. The Jets have two guys protected, like like Gary and that's protected, and that is Toby and Buff. Yes. And but then they have to pick only 3D. Because, because they have no movement clauses. Exactly. But so, uh, Nick Ehlers would be protected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, then that, that comes as uh, the slide effect where, like, if you played... If they're on a rookie contract, they can't take you. I don't think they can take... Yeah. But remember, you're only losing one player per team, yeah. and it all depends on you, what they're you taking. You protect eight guys? Any, any eight? No, you're protecting 11, but you have to protect... Seven forwards, three D, and one goalie. Thought, as of right now, I thought they haven't decided. I, I thought they haven't f- officially decided. This is just what general manager is doing. This is what the outline is at the current moment. Seven forwards, three D, and a goalie. goalie. Yeah. So you have so to you do that on every team. It's very difficult. That's tough. It's something fun to play around with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I'm you have some free right time, now. when you have free time, do it. Um, not right now when we're doing a podcast. I'm doing it. No. All right. Anyways, continuing on. No, I, I'm. I'm I will right tweet now. the link. Because it's awesome. I've it's only cool. played it once. And there's like, obviously you're going to play bias, but then you're like, wow, some guys wide open. But the other thing too is you have some very difficult decisions like Boston. Who do you keep? Who do you let go? Even coaches. Oh, wait. Did you guys notice? I don't know if we talked about this or not. Earlier in June, not like the first week of June, the Blues hired Mike Yo as an assistant yes. coach. I didn't yeah. see that. And he's going to take over for... That happened like two, Hitch, day, like two days ago. ago. Oh, I thought it was earlier. Yeah, and he's taking over for Hitchcock when Hitchcock's done yeah. the next season. Yeah. So Mike Yo is the new coach for so, St. Louis Blues. There's a coach, Hitch. No, no, he's, he's done. He's, he's done, done coaching. Like the reason he he's stopped coach. is because he's retiring. He's done. Uh, coaching. It's probably going to be He signed Crawford. a one-year deal. Let's be honest, done. it'll probably be Mark Crawford. Or no, did he sign someone? He just got... He's coaching He just got signed. That's right. Never mind. It's going to be Ron Wilson. Claude Noel. Coach oh, wait, sorry. Dallas that Eagles. former Toronto coach didn't get signed. But Randy Carlisle did. Woo! In the Ducks. Anaheim. Holy shit. That is a tire fire of a franchise, and I love it. And I love arguing with Ducks What fans. does tire fire mean? It's going up in flames. It's going uh, up in flames. flames. Okay. They... I'm sorry, Ducks fans. Not only did you not make it past the first round, you let Bruce Boudreau go. Then you signed the guy who can't coach out of a tin can, Randy Carlisle. At That's least late- a new one. It's only lately because he ca- he will not change his team's game around. He's the coach that benched the best defensive player for the Toronto Maple Leafs for an entire third period of Game 7 when they were up 4-1. Leo Komarov did not hit the ice for 17 minutes and 54 seconds, and he was one of their best Corsi players in that series and all season. You don't want to believe advanced stats, but it's true. 2-3 this season in Corsi relative were in the Stanley Cup final. Ooh, San Jose and Pittsburgh. I th- <sighs> I Doesn't matter. That's real high and good. Two of the top three teams were in the stat. So there's obviously something to these possession numbers. He doesn't believe in that. I hope that his... 
I hope that the assistant coaches there at least work at putting something together. But they have a very tough offseason with Lindholm, Vatanen, um, and then they have to figure out their goalie situation because they're losing Frederick Anderson. He's an RFA. I don't know if they're going to trade him or what they're doing with him. It's a very interesting scenario, but I love the fact that they signed Randy Carlisle because they may not see the playoffs. After he won the Cup, he only got them as far as the first round with them missing playoffs. He's not that fantastic of a coach. He does not have a Scott Niedermeyer and Chris Pronger at defense. He doesn't have that there. He's Kevin Bieksa. He is a $6 million man in Ryan Kessler as his second-line center. And then he gets to pick between Fowler, Vatanen, and Lindholm. And Lindholm. And the other problem is the two guys that lobbied to get him fired in the first place are his one and two top players in Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff. They don't want him there. At least they didn't last time he was there. Rehiring a coach that's already been fired, it, I don't think it works. And, yeah, like statistically, has there ever been a coach that's done well? Like I know the only guy I can think of, Paul Maurice, he, went, he was Carolina. He got them in the cup final. They lost. He got fired. He came back and he got them in the conference final. Yep. So, I mean, that's... if that's Did he win the Cup with them or no? No. He, oh, got, so he got them in the final in the year they lost to Detroit. Oh, okay. And then he, in 09, he got them back to the conference final. Against? Against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yes, so and that, that team That's the only remote case of a coach being rehired that was somewhat successful that I can think of. I'm just speaking... But coaches. he got fired again. He's in Winnipeg now. Speaking so. of coaches real He's quick. Doing um, the job. War Junior uh, Team Canada coach got named. Dominic Ducharme, coach of Drummondville Voltigeurs. Super surprised myself. I think he might have declined it. I'm not speculating. McCrimmon? Kelly McCrimmon. Because he's been an assistant coach the last three years. Um, you I know what's not know frustrating is you just took away my perfect segue oh, no. um, into the Carolina-Chicago trade that happened this week. So now let's fix, shoehorn it in. Let's shoehorn it. <clears throat> right up in there. Turvinen and Bickle to the Carolina Hurricanes for a second and a third. Turvinen was one of the main things that Winnipeg wanted in the lad trade, they only got Marco Dano. A little disappointing. But they didn't want to take on the Bickle deal, or the Bickle contract. And Carolina said, sure, we need to hit the cap floor. Speaking of cap floor, Toronto or Winnipeg right now is $2 million under the cap floor. So they got some work to do. So but they could have gotten two vote. But, but you take, you take they, the, they're, hi, they're signing some guys big and long term. Guys, I figured it out. Bickle, he gets $4 million a year, right? He gets a $1 million for every line he's not playing on. And then he gets a $1 million for the line he's on. The fourth line. Perfect. Perfect. So. It's perfect. That's what happens. Carolina. When, that's what happens when a fourth liner has a good playoff and you give them all the money in the world. Carolina has gotten Nordstrom, Teravine, and Bickle, and Zykov from Chicago this season alone. Um, I can't read that name. I can't read these names. I wrote them at work and I can't read. Essentially, Chicago's gotten nothing except for a fifth round and a second round also in return. It's pretty brutal. Because they they all they got their own third round back, so Chicago notable players that have left: Lad, Bufflin, Letty, Sod, Teravinen. The cost and Versteeg, Versteeg like who three, came like, in like left. three times. The cost of winning cups. Sharp. Ugh. Patrick Sharp's gone. Sharp's gone as well. Oduya's gone. Oduya also gone. Letty's gone. Did you say Letty? Yeah, I said Letty. Very. Oh, and me at me, but I don't really say that he was that fantastic. The cost of winning cups. And I was going to mention some. Oh, yes. The money saved on the Brian Bickle contract is apparently going to sign Andrew Shaw long-term and to support his fines. Yeah. Did you guys also see the other trade? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, there's two moves I want to talk about. First Just off... Our hamburger again, Bado? It was, a, it was a good burger while it lasted. Yes, it was an um burger. Was it um -burger? It's now an um burger. Yes. It's gone. Thank you for your service, RJ. The other trade, um, totally didn't know his contract was still valid. Mark Savard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark Savard traded. in a second round this year went to New Jersey for Graham Black and Paul Thompson to Boston. So I guess they're clearing cap for make moves. And then there's two signings that happened. Richard Ponick, one year, 875 with the Hawks. And Riley Sheehan, two years, 1.9, so average 950K with the Wings. There's actually a third signing today. Third signing. Cam yeah. Ward, two years, 3.3 .3 million per year. With? Which is interesting. With, with Carolina? Hurricanes. Oh. Which is oh, interesting because they have Eddie Lack, which I was a little surprised about. It's oh, fine. Yeah. In two years when they relocate, he'll, he don't have to go with them. So, TSN, Craig Button, 
submitted his final draft rankings before the draft next Friday, which we'll be doing our podcast on Saturday, which will be our two-year anniversary, which is pretty awesome. Plus a day. Plus a day. So, rank number one, Austin Matthews, then Patrick Lyon, Jesse Puglia, Yarvi, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Matthew, Matthew Kachuk, Clayton Keller, Logan Brown, Mikhail Sergachev, Oli Ulevi, Alexander, Niel- uh, Alexander Nylander, that is a weird, hard name, Tyson Yost, or Jost, Jake Bean, Kiefer Bellows, German Rubutsov, Rubutsov. It's tough. Dante Fabro, Charlie Mc- McAvoy. I would suck as a play-by-play announcer. Jacob Chitrin, Brett Howden, Michael McLeod, Luke Coonan, Alex DeBrinket. So let's... Where is uh, Winnipeg drafting? Is it 22? Yes. Alex DeBrinket might still be there. Everyone probably remembers him for getting kicked out of the... Canada USA game. Five minutes into the game for yeah. tossing a haymaker in front of Canada's bench. Exactly. Holy really? Yeah. Cam Deenan, Vitaly Abramov, Carter Hart, Will Byton, Dennis Chalowski, Sam, uh, Samuel Girard, Dylan Dubé, Jordan Caro, Caro, Cairo, and then I think his name is Logan Stanley. The one thing I'll take away from him, he's a defenseman, ranked thirtieth in this year's draft, six foot seven, two hundred and twenty pounds. So Toronto, when you get the thirtieth pick from Pittsburgh, because that's what your pick is, pick a six foot seven defenseman so he can fight Chara. Why? Because I need it to happen. Because I need it. That's why. So, one thing I can say is there's only two players in the top sixteen that are under six feet tall. Five nine and a half and five eleven, and there's a six foot six player. In the top 30? In the top... That was top 16. Top 16? Does it, who are the short ones? Short ones are Tyler Jost and Clayton Keller. From, hmm. Yes. So, obviously, very exciting. We're hitting draft time. Oh, right, the yeah, awards. next episode. Yeah. Holy smokes. Next I know. Saturday. Next Saturday. We'll also talk about the NHL awards, uh, and then we'll prep for free agency. So, we'll talk about the draft... Awards, there's bound to be some trades at draft, and I think this will be the most interesting free agent frenzy that we've had in a while, so we'll have to talk about that. Um, until next time, though, thank you for listening. You, whoa, my cool stat about the LA Kings' new captain. Yes, sorry, talk captain. about him. Hey, we go out on top like yeah. Kings. Dan, take it away. Oh, yes. Okay, well, Anze Kopitar was named the captain of the LA Kings today. So Who's Dustin Anze? Brown. Never heard of him. It's yeah. on J. On whatever. Who's Anson Ignorant Anson monster. I didn't know Anson <laughs> Carter was back in the league. He is. Number six. We all yes. get zinged today. That's the yeah. deal. Uh, so Dustin Brown is not the captain anymore. And I heard a stat about him this week, and I looked at it, and I went, really? He has not hit over... He has not had more than 30 points in a season in five years. Brown? Yeah. He Isn't hasn't he getting go to his hockey DB. He hasn't Isn't he getting paid? No, pull this up. Hockey DB. The last First of all, no, uh, you're on general manager. Look at what he's getting paid. Guy. Yeah, look what he's getting paid. And then we'll I'm go into sure the, the status. The last four, it said the last four. It's right years. there. Do it. Oh, look. Do it. He's when making it, five, eight, seven. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, they won two cups. Yes, Dean Lombardi did a very good job. Oh, uh, that is not very nice. <laughs> oh but, by the way. While Dan's looking this up, Mike Richards, where do you think he's going to go? Is he going to stay with Washington? Because he's only going to sign another million not? dollar he deal. He plays great. Yeah, I think another sure. million dollar deal, another you know 1.5. I'll tell you a team, if if the Caps don't want him, I'll tell you a team that should go after Winnipeg? him. Winnipeg? Go, yes, get me. He's what, pretty much a hometown hockey DB. Go to Hockey DB. Why are you no, on Wikipedia? He's on, it. he's on it. No, he's okay. on Wikipedia. We're already gone. 2012-13, 29 points. Who? 2013-14, 27 points. 2014-15, 27 points. 2015-16, 28 points. When did he sign that contract? What year did he sign that contract? Probably 2014, probably. He has not hit over 30 points since 11 12. So Ooh. that's when he signed his contract, for sure. 100%. Going into the locker room. His, wow. his career high is 60. But he's he a third not, liner. He no, is fourth. He's a third, third, third liner. He has not hit 30 points in five years, five seasons. Wait, wait. Yeah. Go David or yeah, go Clarkson's oh, numbers. No. Clarkson's numbers. <laughs> David Clarkson. There's Daniel Clarkson. David. David, David yes. Why are you going to Wikipedia? What are you? Okay, go. Hockey? Go. Name it. From 2014 on. No, 2011 on. K, 15, 16, he had four points, but he played 23 Yeah, games. okay, okay. 14, 15, combined, Injured. he had 15 points. 
Okay. In like Injury, 60 though. games. 13, 14, 11 points in 60 games. <sighs> okay, I'm not making a good case. Never here. mind, never mind. No. Lock out year, he had. No, he had 11 points in 60 games. That's terrible. I know. We're not making a good case. I was going to compare that Dustin Brown was as good as no, David better. Clarkson, but it doesn't work. Because David Clarkson's getting 575. He had 46 in 11 12. Ah! He had 30 goals because they he was both with goals. banked that year. Yeah, they just they raked it in. They're like, his, oh, yeah. His career One high, season. His career High One was 46 season. points. Wow. With he Kobe. scored 30 goals once and he never got over 20 after that. Or before that. Yep. All right. Greg, send us home here. Oh, I don't even know how to continue after. He's that bad. Yep. Holy I shit. had no idea. 5.8. I'm so happy to be a Leaf fan right now. Like, wh- Matt Duchesne is getting six. Matt Duchesne. Mark Scheifele is probably going to sign for 5.5, maybe $6 million. Still a better deal. Blake Wheeler. Obviously, less money than that. Anything's a better deal than that. Would you like two cheeseburgers for $6? Sure. Still a better deal than Dustin Brown. That is he, a great deal. He raked it in. Let's be honest. No fault to Dustin Brown. Fault to the Los Angeles Kings. Yep. One last thing. I think the Las Vegas team could work because we've seen in the West, the one way it works is if a fan base, more people can adopt it nationwide, worldwide. There's tons of Sharks fans everywhere. It's not just in San Jose. There's fans of LA everywhere now. There's fans of Anaheim everywhere. Those three markets have worked. Those three markets are healthy. Because they're Tampa- de- destinations, so go there. Tampa Bay, another team that's very successful because there's fans everywhere. You don't see Panthers fans everywhere. You don't see Hurricanes fans everywhere. I think Las Vegas, because it's going to be a destination place, because it's some place that could be successful, and I think the fans are going to be excited because there's 2 million people there who are sick and fucking tired of going to the Strip to see shows. They'd rather see something in their city that wasn't there just because it's Las... It's there because it's Las Vegas, but it's their own, right? I think it'll be very viable in the first few years. I'm just... I'm thinking long-term, what will happen? They got to establish. Allegedly, they have sold... They have commitment for 13,200 season tickets. Perfect. And a lot of that is going to come from casinos, and I can see a lot of casinos giving away tickets, which still fills the building and fulfills your concession because the casinos make the money off you being in the casino, and the, uh, the team makes money off the ticket sales along with... The concessions. If you want, at compa- the, if you want comparison, the Jets have thirteen thousand season ticket holders. Exactly. Up, so, so, thank you for listening to episode ninety-seven. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, check us out on iTunes or wherever else you get your podcasts, uh, whether that's Google Play or. We tweet out the links to Last Man in PC as well. Everything yes. that we do. Check out our Twitter at Last Man in PC. If you want to email the show, Last Man in PC at gmail And other than that, we'll see you guys next week after the draft. Austin Matthews.